you know what Mike Gravel out of Alaska told me one time? Right face to face, nose to nose. He said, I asked him about why. I said, why are you why are you the only Democrat? Hang on, Michael, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, hang on. The only I said, why are you the only Democrat among these nine guys up there who's even mentioned the fair tax or getting rid of the IRS? He says, well, he said, I brought it up years ago to my colleagues. He was there for a while. And uh, he said, uh, they, they, told, they reminded me that the income tax is used to punish our friends and reward our friends. And, and, Punish our uh, punish our enemies and reward our friends. And I never forgot that he told me that. <laughs> Gravel told me that. Very interesting. All right, Michael, go ahead. Talk to candidate Chuck Baldwin. Mr. Baldwin, it's a pleasure to speak to you this afternoon, Rocky. Thanks for taking my call. Thank you. I'm just wondering, uh, candidate Baldwin, if you could uh, address uh, your thoughts on our membership in NATO and the United Nations. Thank you very much. I believe both are unnecessary and actually harmful to the security uh, and prosperity of the United States. As President of the United States, I would work to get America out of the United Nations, and I would work to get America out of NATO. Uh, I would end all foreign aid, uh, all foreign aid. Uh, we are creating more enemies than we are friends. We are creating more conflicts than we are solving. Uh, we have, for the last several decades, allowed our foreign policy to be manipulated by the United Nations. And, yep. and the fact of the matter is, uh, they are the ones that are working against our own interests. Good grief, it's a bunch of Marxists, communists, and socialists that started it and that continue to dominate it today. And why we allow our foreign policy to be dictated by the United Nations is absolutely absurd. It goes back to what I said at the beginning of this broadcast. I believe we've got to start putting America first. I'm not a world citizen. I'm an American citizen. Hey, a citizen of the state of Florida. It. Finally, a candidate said it out loud that what I say. I'm not a citizen of the world. A citizen of the United States. Yeah, unfortunately, we have people in Washington, D.C. that believe they are the president of the world or the congressman of the world. Yeah. We've got to get people up there that believe in America first and are willing to do what's right for America. And quite frankly, until we break this two-party system that is out of control and broken, I don't think it's going to happen. Where are you on energy? I mean, I was in Costa Rica when George Bush finally stood up and said, well, we're going to we're going to I think we should drill offshore and yeah, explore shale we're... oil. And but the, by the time I got back from Costa Rica 9 days later, a barrel of oil was 30 bucks cheaper, but still 80 bucks over price. Exactly right. Where was he 8 years ago when he became president? Uh, look, it, it's it's yeah. terror it's unreal that these two major parties have allowed our country and this didn't happen overnight. We can't fault one administration. It's been both Democrats and Republicans have allowed us to become dependent on on foreign nations for our energy needs. This is absolutely atrocious. You know, there's more oil in Alaska, I'm told, than there is in the entire country of Saudi Arabia. We just found brand new deposits of, of coal, of natural gas and oil in both of the Dakotas sure. and, and off, off the Gulf of Mexico. The, the problem is not that we don't have the energy. The problem is not that we cannot be energy independent. The problem is we have people in Washington, D.C. that have serious financial connections to the corporate international world, and that includes the the uh, foreign governments and the lobbyists that represent them, mm -hmm. and they're more concerned about satisfying those interests than they are meeting the interests of the people of the United States. I'm a regular guy. I was born and raised on the south side of Chicago, unlike Barack Obama. <laughs> and I got a lot of doing this job. I meet a lot of wealthy people. Big wigs come through here. We do other things besides politics. And you sure. know what? Every wealthy person I know has taken a chunk a huge chunk of their wealth, and they're moving it out of the country. And it's because of the IRS, and it's because of the oppressive government that we live under. They're, they're leaving. Sure, and look at what NAFTA's done to our manufacturing. I used to work for the General Motors Truck and Coach. I was a UAW member for two years, from mm -hmm. 71 to 73. Wow. When I was there, the, the plants were working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, three shifts a day. The economy was great. Unemployment was virtually unknown. I went back, you know, after being away 35 years. The plant I used to work at was totally torn down most of the plants are torn down the other ones are abandoned it's parts of detroit look like beirut lemonade looks like <laughs> a war zone i'm I've telling you it's it's terrible it's 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 atrocious and what's happened thank you bill clinton thank you bob dole nafta happened we got a world wto we've got gat we've got a cafta we've got ftaa Everything. our jobs are in mexico and china and in india and our american workers cannot find uh, good jobs to, to feed their families with i'm, I'm telling you this is both parties have been negligent. Both parties are culpable mm -hmm. in what's happened in this country. American people are sooner or later going to have to wake up and realize these two major parties have taken America over the cliff, and we have got to break this two-party monopoly 
that is currently in control of this country. Harry, talk to candidate Chuck Baldwin from the Constitution Party. Go ahead, Harry. Hey, Chuck, well, I'm sure I'm glad to hear about you. I thought I was the only guy out there that felt like you did, but I've got a couple of questions. One about your stand on the Federal Reserve Bank and what's your, the effect of labor unions on our uh, cost of goods sold uh, nation or worldwide. Right. Let me, let me talk about the, the Federal Reserve. I, I believe the Federal Reserve system is a, a sinister system from top to bottom. It's got to go. When I'm president of the United States, I would like to appoint Ron Paul, Secretary of the Treasury. Uh, and when he comes and says to me, Mr. President, I, I have a plan to uh, wean America off of the Federal Reserve System, I say to him, Mr. Secretary, go for it. We have got to get back to sound money principles. The Federal Reserve System is a private banking institution. It's not a government entity whatsoever. They don't pay taxes. In fact, do you know, uh, Harry, that, most, uh, that no one knows who comprises the Federal Reserve System. Not even the President of the United States knows who's on the Federal Reserve System. And every time you get a list of who's on it, the names are different. This is a decent book you might want to grab. It's cheap, too. The Secret World of uh, Money by Andrew Giles. We have him on once in a while. Yeah, He's a scary guy. Have look, you looked at that? Look, well, look, we've, we've, got, that. We've, got a, <laughs> we've got a system that is, is, is not there. It's not designed to protect the interests of the American people. It's not there to de- design to protect the private... Uh, industry of the American people. It's there to protect uh, the international corporations and, and the whole system. The one system. world global elitists. Exactly They'll right. They move around wherever they want. They move around. Hey, look, how many houses does John McCain have? Seven? Is that, is that the last I number? don't know because he doesn't know. Yeah, I, The fact of the matter is, though, <laughs> you look at these guys that we're talking about, these guys that are controlling our money supply, mm-hmm. creating money out of thin air. It's backed by nothing. There's nothing there to uh, to substantiate what they're doing. They just they just print it. Yeah. Uh, That's and, what he says and, in that book. It's all computer. And look, look, it doesn't matter to them whether America prevails victorious in a given conflict or not. If they need to move somewhere else or go somewhere else, they've got houses all over the world. Uh, they have no loyalty whatsoever to the United States of America. We need a president who will be loyal to the United States of America. Hey, Willow, go ahead. Talk to Chuck. All right. Thanks a lot. First of all, I'd like to thank Dr. Baldwin for all of his dedication to uh, keeping America free. And I would like to uh, just, I mean, right in the face of a state and an impending oligarchy, you know, I mean, he's just dynamo. He and Dr. Well, Baldwin. Okay, ask a question because you're breaking up. We're going to lose you. Okay. Uh, the question is. If you're in D.C., when you get to Washington, and it's you and Daryl Castle and Ron Paul, could you please tell me what you would do, how you pro- how you would proceed, and and which executive orders that you would immediately get rid of? Well, thank you very what, much. What would you change right yeah. away? Yeah. Well, the first thing I would do when I become president, somebody asked me the lack of that question quite a bit. What's the first thing you'd do if you were president of the United mm-hmm. States? The first thing I would do. Uh, would be to give those Border Patrol agents, Ramos and Compion, a pardon. That my, damn right. my first day in, in the White House is their last day in jail. I would offer them their jobs back if they want to take it. I would give them back pay. Uh, it's a disgrace that those two men have serving 11- and 12-year sentences for simply trying to protect our borders and our nation's immigration laws. The second thing I would do would be to set out a course of action that would secure our nation's borders uh, I would use our National Guard to do that. I would use regular military forces to do that if that's what was required. Whatever it would take to secure our borders, that's the first order of business in my administration. 